Hi, I'm James Harris. I'm a general surgeon practicing at Johns Hopkins uh, Howard County General Hospital. Uh, the gallbladder is, is essentially it stores bile. Um, whenever you eat a fatty meal, the gallbladder will contract and give you a, a little bit of bile into your system to help break down the fats that you eat um, and then helps them get absorbed. The liver makes bile and it secretes it down into the common bile duct into your intestines whenever you eat food, but whenever you're not eating and you need bile to be stored in the gallbladder, that's where it goes. And we get a little bit of extra bile secreted into the intestines whenever we eat a fatty meal. The gallbladder is not absolutely necessary because the, the gallbladder only stores bile, it does not make it. So what happens is when someone has their gallbladder out, the, gall, the liver will continue to, to make bile and it will just secrete it directly into the, into the intestines. And the common bile duct uh, ends up getting a little bit bigger over time when you don't have a gallbladder and it serves the function of, of the gallbladder. Well, a gallbladder attack, also called a biliary colic or symptomatic cholelithiasis, is essentially a, a feeling of pain in the right upper quadrant or the epigastric area, which is kind of the upper abdomen, and it results in pain right after you eat a fatty meal. Uh, what happens is you have gallstones, and a lot of people have gallstones and they don't really have problems with pain. Uh, it's only the select few who actually have these symptoms of biliary colic. And what happens is these gallstones get caught in the cystic duct, which is the, the exit way from the gallbladder into your common bile duct and into the intestines. And if a gallstone gets stuck in there periodically, it causes these little episodes of gallbladder pain or a biliary colic. Sometimes it can be confused with a heart attack because the pain is in the upper abdomen, lower chest. People can report to the emergency room and say that they have pain in this area and they often get ruled out for a, a heart attack and, and then they subsequently find that they have gallbladder problems. So people who require a gallbladder surgery or cholecystectomy, removal of the gallbladder, are those who have symptoms because of their gallstones. Many people have gallstones and they don't have symptoms. It's not until those gallstones actually start causing problems. Um, one of the big problems is biliary colic. Um, this is where you're having symptoms of pain after you eat usually fatty meals. Um, this pain, which is associated with the gallbladder, is resolved after removing the gallbladder. Um, Another type of problem is the gallbladder can actually get infected because of these stones. If one of those stones gets trapped in the, the exit of the gallbladder, it's called a cystic duct, if you have entrapment of a stone in there, you can have a really bad infection uh, that could you know, lead to a lot of problems and make you very sick, and that could require uh, removal of the gallbladder as well. Furthermore, if one of those stones from the gallbladder was to get trapped in, this, in the common bile duct and before it exits into your small intestine, it just happens to, to overlap with the area where your pancreas drains. And if the pancreas, if its secretions are blocked because of a gallstone, it can actually cause really bad pancreatitis. And this could be life-threatening. So this is another reason why some patients will require to have their gallbladder removed. And it may not even be directly related to the gallbladder, but because of the gallstones, it could actually cause an infection of the pancreas. Uh, the surgery is performed laparoscopically about 99% of the time. Uh, the gallbladder, if it's not acutely inflamed, meaning that you don't have what's called cholecystitis, um, you usually could do it quite safely with a minimally invasive approach doing laparoscopic surgery. Even if it's acutely inflamed, we still can take it out laparoscopically most of the time. Um, we do it through four small incisions. The biggest one is usually about the size of my thumbnail, but sometimes it needs to be a little bit bigger if the gallbladder is very large and full of large stones. Um, the other one's about the size of an eraser head, so recovery after surgery is you know, fairly, fairly well. Um, people tolerate the surgery very well. Um, they often have the surgery the same day and are, dis uh, are discharged the same day after surgery. Um, and uh, the recovery uh, 
entails uh, pain medication the first couple days. Most people don't need to be on pain medication for more than a week because the incisions are small and they uh, do quite well. They can resume a normal diet immediately after surgery.